separate but equal but you know having even mentioned the Floyd Mayweather fight they walked away with you know hundreds of millions of dollars at stake you being at the at the height of your sport maybe make what a, a million dollars at most per fight does that anger you and what can we do to change that uh, I don't like to talk about exactly how much money I make but I'm extremely comfortable and happy you are yes okay so and uh, you know if I got to a point where I had almost 50 fights, I would probably be making close to the same amount of money that Floyd does. But at this point, I have 11. So <laughs> I can't expect it to be exactly um, equal. Yeah. County Sheriff David Clark, trial attorney Eric Guster, join us. Uh, Sheriff Clark, what do we want? Dead cops? You know, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, and, and, and all lives matter or black lives matter. People say black lives in the Democratic Party. I don't understand. Try and help me understand. Well, there is no way to understand this nonsense. First of all, Sean, the claims made by Tarantino, he's a limousine, limousine uh, liberal, he's a one percenter, and the claim made by President Obama that this is not based on uh, emotion, it's, it's real. It's just plain wrong. These claims are based on fiction. Once you strip away the myths, the lie, the propaganda, all that remains are the facts. Lies put out and repeated over and over again by the President of the United States are not a substitute for empirical research. The facts are these. In a three-year period, 2009 to 2012, there were about 1,491 uh, uses of force, deadly uses of force by police officers. Sean, 61 percent of the people involved in those, uh, that use of force were white males, 32 percent black males, an almost two-to-one ratio. If there's anybody that's got a claim on police use of force, it's white males. The other thing is this. Again, data and research. 0.04% of perpetrators of black homicide are police officers, less than one-tenth of one percent. And on the other hand, 93% of perpetrators of black homicide are committed by other black people. The President of the United States lacks the courage to look at the black community and tell them to look, at the mirror, look in the mirror at the, uh, as the source of their problems. How can you argue that racism is not a driving factor in income inequality? Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... <laughs> and when... And when it, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. Explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks and black kids in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain, if it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened. Anybody well, can jump in. It's, uh, it's an open mic there. My poem is titled White Boy Privilege. Dear women, I'm sorry. Dear black people, I'm sorry. Dear Asian Americans, dear Native Americans, dear immigrants who come here seeking a better life, I'm sorry. Dear everyone who isn't a middle or upper class white boy, I'm sorry. I have started life at the top of a ladder while you were born on the first drum. I say now that I would change places with you in an instant, but if given the opportunity, would I? Probably not, because to be honest, being privileged is awesome. I'm not saying that you and me on different rungs of the ladder is how I want it to stay. I'm not saying that any part of me has for a moment even liked it that way. I'm just saying that I fucking love being privileged and I'm not ready to give that away. I love it because I can say fucking and not one of you is attributing that to the fact that everyone of my skin color has a dirty mouth. I love it because I don't have to spend an hour every morning putting on makeup to meet other people's standards. I love it because I can worry about what kind of food is on my plate instead of whether or not there will be food on my plate. I love it because when I see a police officer, I see someone who's on my side. <coughs> to be honest, I'm scared of what it would be like if I wasn't on the top rung, if the tables were turned and I didn't have my white boy privilege safety blankie to protect me. We will make America great again.